Hello everyone. I am going to start a small topic on equilibrium. So first start the chapter we need to know what is equilibrium. So equilibrium to understand this part we will go with an example. Okay. With, uh, a, with a simple process one is evaporation and condensation. So you know evaporation. Evaporation is uh, a simple conversion from liquid to vapor and in the condensation process from liquid to sorry from vapor to liquid right okay we will go with the diagrammatic representations see here uh, we have taken a closed vessel with some liquid and it is attached to manometer which is a pressure measuring apparatus so we have a marks for the level of liquid and level of pressure right right so as evaporation begins Right? Molecules enters into vapor. After some time, what we observe, the observation is that there is a decrease in the level of liquid and increase in the pressure. This appears. Right? So, so many vapor molecules are formed. They exert pressure due to that the level in the pressure is increased. So, finally, it reaches, it reaches a stage where there is no change in the level of liquid and there is no change in the pressure limb and this stage is called as equilibrium stage. So after the final stage there is no decrease in the level of liquid, there is no increase in the level of pressure also. This state is called as equilibrium state. This establishes uh, an equilibrium between liquid and vapor so this indicates means after the equilibrium formation the number of it uh, not in terms of number we say in terms of uh, uh, the amount of vapor formed it doesn't change it remains constant similarly in the amount of liquid also whatever once equilibrium has been formed the amount of liquid and the amount of vapor will remains constant the amount of substance is taken in terms of even in terms of a concentration right then the definition comes as equilibrium is a state right at which concentration of reactants and products remains same they do not change with time okay so equilibrium is is considered as a dynamic so regarding this dynamic part even we will discuss in the uh, general characteristics of physical process there we will clearly understand with an example here just you, you have to know so rate of forward reaction is equals to rate of backward reactions in the first example that what we have given evaporation is a forward process condensation is a backward process the rate of evaporation is equals to rate of condensation means that means how many number of molecules enters into vapor state from liquid is equals to same number of molecules condensing from vapor to liquid it has to be same Okay, consider let 10 number of molecules are converting into vapor state same 10 number of vapor molecules are converting into liquid state so this makes the rate of evaporation is equals to rate of condensation which takes place at equilibrium. So this type of equilibrium can be observed both in physical and chemical processes. So first in this class we are going to discuss about uh, the equilibrium establishment in physical process. So in the physical process just first we go with the phase transformations. You know the phase transformations conversion of uh, states from solid to liquid, liquid to vapor and solid to vapor or solid to gas we say. So first we discuss the, the solid liquid equilibrium. So in the solid liquid equilibrium, so as represented in the diagrammatic part, I have taken an insulated vessel where there is no exchange of heat between systems and surroundings. So in this I have taken a small amounts of ice and small amount of water. So when it has taken at a constant temperature, the amount of ice and the amount of water do not change. As temperature is maintained at constant temperatures, at, let us consider at 273 Kelvin, the water is in, I sorry, ice is in equilibrium with the liquid. At this rate of melting, means conversion of ice into water is uh, uh, melting, conversion of water into ice is freezing. So here how many number of molecules of ice turn into liquid is equals to at means it is same at the conversion of liquid to ice. So, so this makes that water is in equilibrium at what conditions the condition is at constant temperature right okay. So the temperature at which both solid and liquid are in equilibrium 
and that temperature at an atmospheric pressure is called as normal freezing point. When you maintain the temperature as a constant, okay, uh, in that time the amount of ice and the amount of water doesn't change as we said amount is in terms of a concentration also we can say. Similarly, if you go for the liquid vapor equilibrium, here we say that uh, as in the first example we discussed, so some molecules enters into vapor state and vapor molecules condense once again into liquid state, right. So here we have observed the vapor and liquid equilibrium, water vapor and water liquid equilibrium. So the liquid particularly we have taken it as water. So this takes place at a constant pressure. So pressure uh, uh, measurable property is constant, right? So the pressure exerted by the vapor, so here whatever the vapor present here in the equilibrium, the pressure exerted by this vapor is uh, at a particular temperature is called as equilibrium pressure or vapor pressure of the liquid. And the temperature at which both liquid and vapor are in equilibrium at atmospheric pressure and that temperature is called as boiling point. Okay, so this is about the liquid gas equilibrium. And the third one, solid gas equilibrium. This solid gas equilibrium is observed only in sublimable compounds. Sublimation process has to consider. Sublimation means conversion of solid to gas without liquid. So some of the examples of uh, sublimable compounds like iodine, camphor, ammonium chloride, naphthalene, these compounds are sublimable compound, they don't turn into liquid, they directly turn into vapor. So as represented in the diagram, just concentrate more on the diagram. So what I took, I took a closed vessel, in that I have taken an iodine crystal. So iodine crystals are like that small balls as represented red balls, these are like iodine crystals. So when it is heated at a small temperatures, this iodine turns into vapor. As I said, it is sublimable, it directly turns into vapor. So iodine vapor, which is violet vapors are formed, intensity of the color. So once, if I maintain at a constant temperature, we observe iodine vapors and iodine crystals, both are observed, which has iodine solid and iodine vapor or an equilibrium. So these are the three phase transformations, equilibrium in a physical equilibrium even we can consider or even we can study equilibrium in solutions so solutions you know that uh, the mixture of two or more components so it's similar uh, in the introductory part i am going to take uh, with a simple one with a simple one uh, that is uh, a, a solution form so i have taken in a beaker with the water with the water and uh, and i am dissolving some sugar right so i am dissolving sugar in it so what it forms it forms a solution which is sugar solution. So this water has a capacity to dissolve the sugar. So it forms sugar dissolves completely which forms an unsaturated solution. What does the unsaturation means? So the water or any solvent which has capacity to dissolve the substance is called as an unsaturated solution. Okay. So if we add keep on adding sugar, okay, we are adding continuously 5 spoons, 6 spoons, 10 spoons. If you add continuously sugar, so finally a stage has been reached for the water so it cannot dissolve the sugar so what happens means some sugar some sugar will be deposited at the bottom of the beaker as a undissolved sugar then such type of solution is called as a saturated solution so solutions which has capable to dissolve substance is unsaturated which has end point which which, which completely uh, has an end to dissolve so remaining whatever you add it will settle down completely at the bottom then such type of solutions are called a saturated solutions so in this in this also we observe the two process one, the, one is a forward process is dissolution when sugar dissolves completely it is a dissolution process from the sugar if they crystallize once again turn into solid sugar then that process is called as a crystallization process so we observe the equilibrium in saturated solutions so in a saturated solutions so sugar sol sugar in a solution is converting into solid sugar once again solid sugar converted into sugar solution and so what does this equilibrium in this means so how many number of molecules going into solution same number of molecules depositing into solid so here at equilibrium rate of dissolution of sugar is equals to rate of crystallization of sugar right now, this is the one next one is gases in liquids so you know that uh, ocean 
uh, or the aquatic animals they up uh, they they take the oxygen which is dissolved in the water in the in the sea water or in the marine water right so gas can dissolve in liquid so a simple examples of a gas dissolved in liquid is aerated drink that is the cool drinks that what we say say carbonated water so carbon dioxide is dis dissolved in water so if i take a liquid that is a water here and if i give carbon dioxide in a closed vessel to the water so some molecules will dissolve in a liquid and some molecules will above in the above of the liquid so how many molecules will dissolve in a liquid it depends upon the pressure of the gas the solubility of a gas depends on pressure and it is uh, quantitatively uh, the amount of uh, gas dissolved in a liquid that is the solubility is uh, given by henry and it is dis discussed now it is as a henry's law Okay, so Henry's law. What Henry's law says that how much amount of gas, or even we can say that the mass of gas dissolved in a liquid at a particular temperature. So how much amount of a gas dissolved in a liquid is directly proportional to partial pressure of that gas above the liquid in equilibrium. In equilibrium, what is the partial pressure observed in the vessel? And that partial pressure is directly proportional to amount of gas that is dissolved. Amount is nothing but in terms of mass of a gas. So it is represented as m directly proportional to uh, p, right? Just wait. I will I will erase. Okay. So uh, as I said that so m directly proportional to p means mass of gas dissolved is directly proportional to pressure of gas above the liquid in equilibrium, where m is mass of gas. And in mathematical term, m is taken as is equals to kh into p, where kh is a part uh, Henry's law constant. As temperature changes. KH values also changes. So for a liquid, KH value is fixed at a particular temperature. Okay. So this regarding this Henry's law, we will study once again in solutions chapter also. Right. Next, we discuss on general characteristics of equilibrium physical process. So what it says that the measurable properties of the system is constant. So initially I said uh, the amount of substance is constant. Concentration term is always constant. In pressure is constant. Maybe it means the properties of the system. Some of the properties of the system is uh, constant, like pressure, temperature, volume, concentration. Like this, all these are constant. Second one, when equilibrium is established, is always in a closed system, but not in open system. In order to observe the equilibrium, we just always has to consider with a closed system only. Second one, if the equilibrium is always dynamic in nature. As I said, uh, we will discuss this as in a last point with the uh, experiment, with the demonstration also, right? Okay, so leave this one. So when equilibrium is attained, the concentration of substance, okay, uh, is always uh, constant at a given temperature. Uh, and the magnitude value, if, if I take this equation, if carbon dioxide gas is dissolved in a water or in a liquid, it forms a carbon dioxide solution. So expression is taken as concentration of products by concentration of reactant so this is the concentration of product and this is the concentration of reactant so expression is uh, it is a ratio between concentration of products by concentration of reactants now uh, the last part that we need to discuss on this equilibrium is always dynamic in nature what does this equilibrium is always in dynamic in nature dynamic nature means it looks means uh, i will go with the example itself so I have taken a saturated solution here, some dissolved sugar is there and some undissolved sugar is also there. So to this means at, at equilibrium, what we say that uh, the undissolved sugar remains as it is. So it looks like uh, that it, it cannot, the process is stopped. Actually, the at molecular level, the process is not stopped. Process is always in a continuous. How can you know that? How can you say, sir, that the process is always continuous? So if I take the instead of sugar, if I add a radioactive sugar in substance, which contains some radioactivity, such type of sugar, if I add to the solution. So if the process is stopped, this added radioactive sugar should always remain as a solid. Okay. So uh, after some time, if I check the, I mean, if I do the analysis of the solution, so in the solution also, I have some undissolved, okay. So I have some dissolved radioactive sugar as well as undissolved radioactive. If the process has been started, this undissolved radioactive sugar should not be dissolved and should not be in the solution. Means if it is in the solution, definitely it is dissolved in the liquid. This means the solution, the, the, the process, equilibrium process is always continuous. It looks for, for our naked eye, it looks that the concentration is constant, but actually 
it, it occurs in both process as forward as well as backward continuously it, it, it makes continuous process okay so uh, I feel I hope that uh, the class is uh, uh, understandable uh, please comment on this one right thank you